Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing Von Willebrand disease, a very important subject that you need to know for step one. If you guys don't know on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mad Medicine, you can find all of our lectures for the hemonic portion of step one in a convenient playlist. Just go there, check it out. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. So with that being said, let's talk about the primary hemostasis like we did in our previous video. If you guys want to watch it more in depth, I highly recommend you guys watch that video because we talk about primary hemostasis in depth. Uh, just a quick recap. You have several different pathways, several different components of primary hemostasis. You have injury of the blood vessel, which leads to transient vasoconstriction due to endothelins that are being released by the endothelial cells. And this injury is going to lead to exposure of the subendothelial collagen. The VWF is going to bind to the subendothelial collagen, and that binding allows for platelets now to adhere to VWF and the subendothelial collagen by VWF binding with the GP1B, the glycoprotein 1B complex in the uh, platelet itself. Now, this binding is going to lead to a confirmation change and release of ADP, calcium, and thromboxane A2. I'm going really fast just so we can get through this because there's a lot we have to talk about. If you guys want to hear this slowly, go watch our previous video. Now, this ADP release is going to actually lead to binding, uh, is going to lead to binding to P2Y1 and P2Y12 receptors on the platelet. And essentially, all of this is going to promote the expression, the surface expression of glycoprotein. Oh, sorry. It's going to promote the surface expression of glycoprotein 2B and 3A. A. Okay, that's what is essentially happening uh, with activation. This is how the platelet gets activated, the expression of GP2B3A. This expression is then going to finally allow platelets to aggregate with each other via VWF and fibrinogen binding the GP2B3A receptors of two separate platelets together and thus linking the platelets together. That is a very quick, very, very minimal recap of primary hemostasis. Again, if you want to watch the whole video, I highly recommend you go and watch our previous lecture so you can get a good understanding of what is happening. Now, when it comes to problems with primary hemostasis, there are three main diseases you need to know for USMLE Step 1. All of these are pretty high yield, so do not forget them. They're all caused by deficiencies in something important in the pathway of hemostasis, especially with primary hemostasis. The first disease, and the one we're going to talk about today, is called Von Willebrand disease. The second is called bernard soulier syndrome, and the third is called Glanzmann's thrombosthenia. Okay, all of these are very high yield, and I'm going to give you guys a very good mnemonic to remember all three of these uh, diseases at the end of these lectures, probably at the end of the very last lecture, because then by then we have covered everything you need to know for problems with primary hemostasis. So let's talk about VWF and von Willebrand disease. This disease is an inherited mixed platelet and coagulation disorder, and usually it presents with a deficiency in VWF. It, that is the main hallmark. You're going to see decrease in VWF activity, mainly due to the fact that you have decreased VWF uh, production. And where is VWF produced? Well, it's produced in the alpha granules of platelets, just so a recap, and the weibel platy bodies of endothelial cells. Okay, these are the two main locations where VWF is produced. Now, the general things you need to know is that this is going to be an autosomal dominant disease that is the most common inherited primary hemostatic disease that we know of, and it usually occurs in Caucasians uh, more so than any other race. Now, when it comes to the pathogenesis, you definitely need to understand what is happening. VWF plays an uh, important role in both primary and secondary hemostasis. So a lack of VWF is going to affect both primary and secondary hemostasis. In primary hemostasis, VWF and uh, uh, VWF specifically is important for platelet adhesion to the endothelium as well as to each other. This platelet adhesion to the endothelium affects GP1B and to each other is done by uh, VWF and fibrinogen binding to GP2B3A. So pretty much in the beginning of the primary hemostatic pathway and the end VWF is needed. Now one thing to understand is that essentially in this pathway it is the primary portion that is more so affected than the uh, pretty much the end of the primary hemostatic pathway 
when it, when we're talking about GP two B three A, essentially because platelet aggregation is normal. And that is all due to the presence of fibrinogen. Because you still have fibrinogen, you can still have that terminal uh, platelet plug formation occurring. But the initial binding of the platelet to the subendothelial collagen and the VWF will not occur. And that is where you see problems with primary hemostasis. In secondary hemostasis, VWF is needed for uh, coagulation factor 8. It usually binds to coagulation factor 8, and it allows for a uh, um, it allows for an increased life uh, serum half life of factor 8. Now, VWF is going to affect factor 8 availability because if you have lack of VWF or if you have decreased VWF, as in the case in von Willebrand disease, you're also going to have a decrease in factor 8. Not a significant decrease, but a slight decrease, enough so that it's going to end up having a defect in the intrinsic factor pathway, and it can cause an increase in the PTT. Now, we haven't talked about PTT and the coagulation factors yet. They're going to be in our upcoming lectures. But essentially, because you are affecting factor 8, you are going to affect the intrinsic pathway. And the intrinsic pathway can be tested by a test called the PTT. And because you are causing uh, uh, increase in the intrinsic factor, in intrinsic pathway, because it's taking longer for the coagulation to occur, you're going to see an increase in PTT. That is what is happening. So that's how uh, VWF plays an important role in both primary and secondary hemostasis. Now, when it comes to this disease, there are several symptoms you need to know. Number one, and the most important thing, in my opinion, is going to be mucosal, uh, mucocutaneous bleeding that fails to resolve in a timely timely manner. That is very, very important because usually uh, you shouldn't be seeing that. Bleeding time should be normal. And essentially, if you see something with an increase in bleeding time, mucocutaneous bleeding, right, is going to cause an increase in bleeding time, that is most likely going to be due to VWF deficiency, so a decrease in VWF. You will also see easy bruising like you see right here. These are just some ecchymoses right here. You'll see petechiae, you'll see gingival bleeding, bleeding the gingiva, menorrhagia, and recurrent epistaxis, recurrent nosebleeds. Let's just write that in uh, common terms. So nosebleeds will also be present. And uh, you're going to see an increased bleeding after aspirin use. Therefore, you want to avoid aspirin. All this makes sense because aspirin prevents uh, platelet aggregation. Right? That's why you give low-dose aspirin to patients who are at high risk of cardiovascular disease. Well, if you are decreasing platelet aggregation, and in VWF you, have al you already have a decreased platelet aggregation, if you give aspirin, you're going to further decrease platelet aggregation effects. Uh, and you don't, want, you don't want to do that. Aggregation. So you do not want to do that. Therefore, you want to avoid aspirin use in patients with von Willebrand disease. Now, when it comes to labs, you're going to see a normal PT because the extrinsic pathway, okay, extrinsic pathway uh, does not, uh, it's not affected. You will see an increased PTT similar to hemophilia A. Hemophilia A is a deficiency in factor 8. Okay, that is what is happening in hemophilia A. But in this case, you're going to see a similar result because VWF plus factor 8 are present. Now, if you knock out VWF, you're going to have a transient decrease in factor 8. Not to the same level as hemophilia A, but still enough to increase the PTT. And you're also going to see an increased bleeding time. The reason why you're going to see the increased bleeding time because this is a test of primary hemostasis. And we know that primary hemostasis is affected because of the very uh, beginning stages of hemostasis being affected with a lack of VWF. The PTT is a test of secondary hemostasis. Let's just write all this down so you guys remember. Now, when you are looking at the lab values, you're still going to see a normal CBC because the blood is not affected, the red blood cells are not affected, everything else is normal, the platelet count is even normal, okay, so you're not going to see thrombocytopenia, everything is going to be normal except for these two findings. When it comes to diagnosis, you can do something called the Ristocetin assay, which is going to show decrease in platelet uh, agglutination. 
And uh, this is usually going to crack with the addition of normal plasma that contains VWF. But the risk to see an assay is only seen, honestly, when it comes to von Willebrand factor and von Willebrand disease. That's it. That's the only time I've ever heard of it. So if you're going to commit this to memory, just remember risk to see an assay, von Willebrand disease, and by extension, von Willebrand uh, factor. Now, when you're treating these patients, you can give them something called DDAVP, desmopressin. This causes a release in the von Willebrand factor that's stored in the, in the endothelial cells. We don't really know how that happens, but you can also give factor 8, and uh, recombinant factor 8 already contains VWF. So these are your main treatment options, DDAVP, uh, desmopressin, or factor 8 that already contains VWF. Okay, so that is von Willebrand disease in a nutshell. Now let's talk about the classic presentation for this these uh, these disease this disease excuse me, and then we'll end with that. So the classic presentation is going to be a patient who is 20 to 30 year old Caucasian female. And uh, the reason we're saying female is because it can present with menorrhagia or it can present with any other thing. So we're just going to use a female for now. Uh, in Caucasian because it's most likely going to be in a Caucasian. Now, they're going to present with prolonged bleeding after a dental procedure. You're going to see petechiae on the patient's face when you look at them and you do a, a physical exam. And bleeding has not stopped for several hours. They've been bleeding from their gums. And the past medical history is going to include heavy and prolonged menses, right? We talked about menorrhagia, so that's another uh, finding. Now, the history is also going to uh, show that they had several episodes of unexpected nosebleeds, the, uh, the epitaxis that occurred, and then the labs are going to show a normal PT, slightly, slightly, that's very important, slightly increased PTT. Platelet count is going to be normal, and you're also going to see an uh, increase in the bleeding time. That is, that is another giveaway. So you, what you are going to do is order a risk to see an assay, and that's going to show decreased platelet aggregation, and that should clue you, ladies and gentlemen, into von Willebrand disease. That is a classic presentation for step one that you should be aware of. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you guys want us to cover a specific topic or you have, if you have a question, leave a comment below. Follow us on our social media accounts right here. And uh, you can find all these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.